let's again touch, uh, not very briefly, but we touch the foundation, what is actually Tantra? Okay, I see because some people here doing uh, for, I don't know, 15 years, 14 years? Uh, 25. 25, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, some doing 12 years meditation and a few years yoga and the guys that started from today to go into intense practice and so I wanted to see what is more or less the level of a practice around. And uh, Tantra brings a uh, lot of confusion to people in the West. Okay, what, what is actually Tantra? Okay. Uh, I would say it's a, a philosophy and a, a, a way of looking to life. Okay? And we start with a, a comparison between two streams. One is called Tantra and one is called Vedanta. Okay? Almost every spirituality you can put under uh, these uh, categories. Okay? Uh, now, there are hundreds of scriptures that call uh, Tantras or Agamas. Okay. And there are many schools of Tantras with, that have uh, different views. So it's not the easiest thing to define Tantra. Okay. But there are still things in common to all the Tantric schools. And uh, I think the most important is a positive view of reality. Or if you want to say it in a Tantric way, it's called adoration of Shakti. True. Adoration of Shakti. Adore. Yeah, to adore. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, in Tantrism, you have uh, two elements, Shiva and Shakti. Okay? Shiva is, if you want to put it simple, it's consciousness. That is uh, the transcendent consciousness. And Shakti is whatever manifested in a form. So form can be the physical body, it can be the internal movement of energy, Okay, like what you call prana. You familiar with the idea of prana or chi? What's your name, by the way? Sophia. Sophia, okay. So you familiar with prana? No, so I, I'll come to that. Uh, when you have a feeling of love, you feeling the sensation in the chest, like, you know? So th this sensation we call prana. Sure. Prana, yeah, or chi. If you are hungry and you don't have food, so you feel lack of energy. Then you eat, and then you feel, oh, I have more energy again. So when you talk of energy, don't look for anything spiritual, it's completely mundane, mm. okay? Yeah, so you're with a good friend, it kind of give you a boost and you get a good energy. Mm. That is the, the whole story. So prana is manifested form, so it's part of Shakti. And also what you call the mental, the emotions, the thoughts, whatever is moving, it's all a whole form of energy. So Tantra give respect to it and, and use it. Okay. Um, in the in the Vedantic world, okay, it's kind of an opposite philosophy that rejects in different ways the feminine aspect. Okay, rejecting the world. So if you think of like the Christianity, okay, so, so the body is a sin or sexuality is a sin. Yeah, you try to refrain from desires and from the world as much as you can. In Vedanta. Uh, is it withdrawing from the world? Hmm? Withdrawing, withdrawing but also it's something rejecting. Some of them really kind of say the world is kind of the world is an illusion for the Vedantics. It's, it's it's an illusion, and it's causing pain. And then because of that, you need to withdraw from the world, okay, to get out of that, and very often not to come back to that, or some more more often just to minimize all the sensual desires to the world. Very often the ideal is to transcend the world and not to come back here anymore. If you go to Vipassana, Vipassana is a Buddhist uh, tradition, it's a very good one, uh, but the idea is to reach Nirvana and finish, never to be manifested in a physical form anymore. Yeah. Okay? Also Hare Krishna, I guess. Uh, in Hare Krishna... They don't want sex. No, they don't <laughs> want sex at all. A little pedophilia, I would say, they like their... The, it, it, there were a lot of pedophilia in other Krishna. But what? Pedophilia? They had that? Yeah, yeah. Well, not, not formally, but yeah, there was a kind of investigation. It <laughs> was like the Catholic Church. Exactly, and, and the Jewish. Uh, yeah, as well as the press. Yes, so. Strong force. It's very simple. When you force, uh, you, when you suppress emotions and feelings, and especially sexuality, it will become perverse. Mm -hmm. yeah? 
this is uh, it's really simple. This is what uh, happens, uh, you know, when you do that. I mean, I've seen horrible things in the in because I'm I was born as a Jew, so I've seen this, lots of horrible stuff. But Christianity has a very good uh, competition with Judaism, and a uh, Muslim, I think, win easily both religions uh, with suppression and perversions and, and this kind of stuff. Um, so there is kind of more in a Vedantic view, there is a more negative view of the world. Do not always say it like that. But this is what happened in practice. This is the reason when the classic Vedantic of uh, in India, they used to go to the river four o'clock in the morning and to bathe in the cold water. You know, like the, very often a kind of to torment the body. Uh, flagellation, do you know what is that? Yes. Flagellation, the Christian. I'm guilty, I'm guilty, you know, this kind of thing, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, so the body is kind of, uh, kind of a negative. And in Tantra, so we look to the world as manifestation of the divine, and because of this, the world is divine. The world is part of, of part of God. Okay. Um, so there is nothing wrong, wrong with the world. There is nothing wrong with sexuality or your desires and everything. Okay. Everything is great. Now, from the philosophy that the world is uh, is positive by its nature, can practices that use the body and energy. Okay. So the body is a tool to reach higher spirituality. Uh, and in Tantra, you will see uh, uh, two branches. Uh, I'll come to the literal explanation uh, in a second of uh, what is Tantra. But the right hand Tantra is a Tantra with, without sexuality. Okay? So uh, these are practices that usually based on uh, the uh, energy forms. Okay? It's an energy model. It's the model. Do you know the model of the chakras? You familiar with this record? Yeah, the model of the seven chakras. The you know the model, the model of structure of yeah. energy. Um, so it's kind of okay. We come to the ex more explanation of, of chakras uh, a little bit after. But the idea is to use energy and body, okay, as part of our spirituality, okay. Uh, there is a certain form of Hatha Yoga in the uh, Tantric practice, in the right hand Tantric practice. And lots of work with the mantras and different things that connected to energy. The left hand Tantra is Tantra that based on sex. This is the one that is uh, more common in the, uh, in the West. So it's based on the male-female polarity. And also when you do these exercises that based on uh, what you call connection, it's kind of related more to the left hand, okay? How to use the, this um, dynamism between men and women to reach higher spirituality, okay? And uh, ultimately how to use, um, you can say, the sexual connection between men and women to reach enlightenment, mm. yeah? So it is important to understand that the idea of Tantra is not to get good relationship. The idea of Tantra, of the traditional Tantra, is to be enlightened. Okay? Um, now, when you use... Uh, yeah, please. So I'm thinking, okay, uh, uh, many uh, heard many say that we are like, a okay, man could be like 70% masculine and 30% feminine. Oh. And so if I find a woman, the opposite, they kind of match, make sense in a yin yang kind of way. And that's why it maybe could be difficult to do it alone because we are kind of imbalanced with if we if we are just on our own. Or maybe that is this putting the thing together more makes it more yin yang and then more like a, a, a an expression of the whole world in a way. Yeah, well, that, this is this is a uh, the expression is correct. I mean, it's kind of um, it's a mini model of yeah. the uh, macrocosm, macrocosm. Yeah. yeah, Shiva and Shakti. Shiva is the uh, masculine principle, and Shakti is the feminine principle. And men and women also symbolizing that. This is true. But you can go to a balance between your male and female female qualities in your being. Mm -hmm. This is the meaning of Hatha Yoga. What is Hatha Yoga? Is the moon and the sun, the female. And uh, uh, the male polarities. What does that do? Hmm? 
Mm-hmm. Yes, actually, yes. Well, if we become 50-50, then we lose pe- uh, polarity with the girls, and then it's kind of... Uh, then, according to Vedanta, it's great. It means that you lose... <laughs> you lose I don't know that. to Vedanta. <laughs> 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 I don't know that. Never mind that. So, I mean, yes. what you can do is to balance the inner energies inside you, yes. and then sublimate. You can transform sexual energy inside you without a girl, and to reach nirvana, to reach samadhi, to reach the ultimate. Yeah. Okay? I mean, well, well, so what, what is the whole problem? Why well, the, the Buddha was talking about desires, okay? Yes. Yeah, what, is, what, is the, what is the red talk of the Four Noble Truths? Are you familiar right. with the Four Noble Truths of the Buddha? What? Four the Noble... Yeah. Four yeah, no, Noble... Yeah. 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 There is pain. Hmm? There is pain. Uh, there is suffering. There is suffering, yes. So, and when the Buddha talk of suffering, this is the first Noble Truth. So he talked there is a um, kind of a general dissatisfaction if, like, in life. We almost never like content, oh, everything is great. <laughs> you were always looking for something, okay? And you are kind of always in a restless, move, always restless. There is always kind of movement. Oh, I need this, I need that, I need that, I need that. Okay, and this is called dukkha, suffering. And the Buddha says that the, the cause of suffering is des- are desires. So what is the story of, of desires? So. If you have desire for something and you don't get it, you are going to suffer. This is a fact. Yeah? This is kind of easy to understand. Now, if you fulfill your desire, so you might be content for some time, and then your mind want to get something else. Yeah, this is a fact. So you say, well, I get really stunning, beautiful woman, you know, and great relationship. And what happened after some time? It's not really that, huh? Then either you want to be alone, or you want to get another girl, or another guy, and this is not good, not good. So the mind will not be ever happy with whatever you get. I mean, it's coming to that. If you have a idea that you are going to get happiness through the world, by achieving things in the world, you will always go to suffering. This is the truth of the Buddha. And also the yogis believe the same. By the way, also in Tantra, it's not different in that. If you want to base on happiness on that, it's going to fail. But they say there is other source that through that you can get ultimate happiness. Yeah. Okay? Or it will not even try to say happiness, say freedom. To reach freedom. Through what? Okay? Mm-hmm. And this is through what called the Shiva Aztec. Through what? Through, through what? Can you, uh, you know, through what? Uh, so, yeah. Yes, my English is a. Uh, I have Israeli English, I apologize. Uh, but how do you reach uh, uh, okay, a genuine uh, freedom? Okay, so you, 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 get it, you can get it through something beyond the world. This is what the yogi said. If you get it through the world, it's going to bring suffering. And it's something beyond that. Okay, and this is what called Shiva consciousness. Okay, now what, what they have done in the Vedanta, they say, yes, the world is, can cause so much suffering, and desire can cause suffering. So let's fight the desires and try just to reach the ultimate. This is more or less the Vedantic, Vedantic view. Um, what Tantra is saying, that the manifested form, the Shakti form, the energy, the body, human relationship, sexuality, and all the rest, can be tools to reach realization. Okay, so you can reach the transcendent state through, through that. Um, but even if you use all that, you don't stuck on uh, material reality. Yeah? So if you have the idea, I'm going to find a great relationship and this is going to bring me uh, true happiness, uh, according to the Buddha, Buddha, you can forget it. It's not going to happen. Okay? And they use horrible uh, sometimes uh, exercises how to cut people from these uh, false ideas. Uh, this, this, this We're gonna do them later. Yes, if you, want, if you want to do repulsiveness of the body meditation, we can do it uh, maybe after the uh, this. Uh, but we say no. We say uh, yes, it can cause suffering, but you can also go through that and to use that. So in Tantra, we use uh, relationship between men and women. We use sexuality and use all the stuff, okay, to reach the higher realization. Okay. This is what we call in uh, Tantra the movement of uh, Shakti to Shiva, okay, to going up, okay, from the low chakras to the to the high chakras to the. Okay. 
to the ultimate. Um, and according to the tantric, it's not the end of the story. After you reach the ultimate, you reach Samadhi, you reach Nirvana, you reach realization of God, if you like, uh, you come back to the world and you continue to live life through this understanding. Okay? So, yes, you can also have sex after, after a state of enlightenment. You can have chocolate. Okay? You can continue to enjoy, enjoy life. But you understand that the world is kind of an illusion. Okay? It's not something that you will be stuck to look for, oh, where can I find my happiness? And, you know, with enough... And then you live in totally service. Uh, yes. This is the best way. I mean, if you rise up, if you run from the chakra view, so you rise from Muladhara, from the bottom chakra to the crown, this is uh, connected to Samadhi, to enlightenment, and then you descend down to the heart, and through the heart you serve others. Some yogis say you can go to Vishuddha chakra also. Some say that you can live on all aspects of life after that. I think Osho is one of them. You can, walk, you can go into everything, but you are not falling to the, the, to the delusion of life. Okay, uh, because if you cling, I'm going to get happy through this body and senses. I mean, the body is getting old, and the body is going to die. This is a fact. <laughs> okay, and you don't, we don't want to talk of that. Yeah, people don't want to talk about that, and they don't talk about sex. In tantra, they don't they want to talk about sex, but outside, they don't want to do that. But nobody wants to think of the fact that you are going to die soon. Yeah, so the body is going to finish. Yeah, so well, what what happened after? No senses, no body. Yeah? So, according to the old tradition, this is what is going to bring you back to the world. Because you, you have more and more and more craving. Okay? Um, now, I can say, tell you like that. When you go actually to do a high experience of Samadhi, you reach a certain um, experiences, if I can call it experiences, that are way beyond any kind of happiness that you get in the world. Way beyond. Okay? And when you go to that, you don't want to come back. Yeah, you just want to get that. But if you don't have that, you say, no, I don't want to live my tiny desires, you know, I want still to have everything uh, getting through that. Uh, now, the point is like this, you don't need to believe me, and you don't need to renounce your desires. You just need to know how to use your desires in a tantric way. This will uh, uh, kind of more solve the problem. Now, let me go to my paper for a second, because a bit I uh, went out of what I was... Uh, I uh, wanted to talk. Um, yeah, so it's kind of related to that. From the um, one of the meaning of tantra is expansion. Okay, uh, in the normal state of the human being, he feel isolated and separated from the world. Okay, I am here. This is you, and there is the whole world around us. <coughs> and if you have some religious feeling, you might have there is kind of a god somewhere in. Uh, I don't know, the seventh sky or God knows what. Okay? Uh, first law. Hmm? First law, yes. <laughs> um, now, what happened from the egoic state? Uh, then you think what I can get from the world to make myself happy. Very often people have the feeling as much as I'm going to get more, I'm going to be more happy. You probably you know some of these people, yeah? More women, more money, more, I don't know what, more assets. Yeah? Freedom. Uh, <laughs> it, you never have freedom. Something <laughs> not that you can have, where is the freedom, yeah? Uh, but you see, when you t try to get a lot, these people not becoming more happy. Greed is not, cannot bring happiness. Now, Tantra is bring, expand the consciousness of the human being, of being separated individual to state of non-duality or state of unity. Okay? The state of unity to the people that know yoga very much connected to sasara. There is no feeling I am here, this is the world. There is non-duality. How to express it? But it is existing existing state. Okay? Uh, and then you find a true connection to the world. It's not about you, the world is part of you. And very naturally from that you come to, to give service to others. Because there is kind of no difference. Yeah? Somebody hungry you will naturally give food for him because he's part of you, he's not something mm -hmm. something else. Okay. Um, all right. Um, let's go a little bit uh, general talk uh, before we go to the exercise, how it's um, being done. Okay. 
energy. Uh, the human body is connected to the, to the mind. Yoga and Tantra talk of body-mind connections. So, as we said, you've been into a few of the classes before, different aspects of the body related to different aspects of the mind. So, let's take a Svadhisthana chakra. Okay? Svadhisthana is the area of the low belly. Yeah, it's two things above the genitals. And this area connected to uh, sexuality, sensuality, fantasies of the mind, okay? The fantasy to find the perfect relationship connected to that, connected to that. Um, the fantasy to be truly happy in the world and to create a perfect world and this kind of that are related to Svadhisthana. If you go to Muladhara, this is in the perineum, it's connected to the very much material world, okay? Okay, like I need to have more and more money. Okay, I, I will feel secure only if I'll be a millionaire. This be the uh, Muladhara chakra state. If you go to Manipura, it's the neighbor area, it's connected to power. Okay, power and ego. Yeah? I'm going to have a big company and they make lots of money and I'm going to control so many people. Yeah, I want to be Adolf Hitler kind of person. Okay, this can be a sort of a Manipura. No, I'm a bit limited <laughs> to talk about the chakras. Yeah, but uh, according to... Uh, some theories, Adolf Hitler used yogic techniques that connected to Manipura. The symbol of swastika is connected to Manipura chakra. We have one asana that's called swastika asana, that is affecting Manipura, but he used probably things uh, a bit more advanced than that. Okay? Uh, when you talk of uh, Anahata and Vishula, they are connected to love and purity, the heart and throat. Okay? Like higher manifestation of the human being. If you take of Ashna and Sarsara, they are connected to wisdom and consciousness, to the to the ultimate. Okay? Now, what we are going, to, what we are doing in tantra, we take using the low energy, the sexual energy, the material energy, the sensual energy, and we transform it to the high energies. And we are going, we now do it through the body. Okay. So it's a very practical form of practice. Yeah? If the energy is, is down, it will trigger the sexuality and all the rest. Okay? When the energy is up, it triggers the higher state of consciousness. Now, uh, in Tantra, and this is the beauty of the left hand Tantra, the sexual Tantra, you very often, you really increase the low energy. You take it to the maximum. All the energies that cause problems with desires and all the stuff, you make it extremely strong and then you shift it through yogic techniques to the higher levels. So if you succeed to take, let's say during love making, yeah, you have all of you probably experienced very intense energy down. So if you succeed to move it to Anahata, you move it to the heart, you can experience the orgasm in the heart, okay? And orgasm can be explosion of energy here, and then it will be unbelievable state of love. Okay. Now some of you have, might have the idea that it's going to take God knows how, how long. I had one student I remember he had, he had this experience exactly one day after the workshop. Okay. But he was a bit fanatic kind of guy, so he did lots of practice. He just push and got the orgasm in the heart with his partner. Uh, so it's extreme state of love. If you take the energy from the bottom and it's going all the way to the crown, okay, so it's in state of samadhi. It can bring state of samadhi. So you go into state of nirvana to put the energy on the bottom. This is the reason that it's kind of I don't care what do you think is real or not. It's like just if you go through the practice and you do it the right way, it will kind of naturally take you there. Okay? So it will we use the illusion to go beyond the illusion. Now what happened when you go here? Whatever is, is in the bottom is not so much important anymore. You will kind of transcend it. Yeah? If you go to Samadhi state, uh, Nirvana state, then orgasm is nice, but it's not so much important. <laughs> if you're Svadhisthana, if, if you have lots of energy here and you don't have much here, yes, then you want lots of relationship and sexuality and, and all the rest. But this is fine. I mean, this is the world that we are living in. This is... Uh, this is what happened to most people. 
Yeah? The energy around you, of course, is affecting you very strong, so you, you get this energy to you. Yeah? So we are going to use this energy to move higher. Um, now, to really succeed, to have this control of energy and stuff, you need yoga. You need a specific uh, styles of yoga that work in that. Okay, they are under the form of Tantra. There are many, ma there are many schools for that, like Yogi Bhajan, like Nisa, Neta in uh, Denmark, like Agama, like uh, many other teachers are not connected to any of the, of the big names. Okay, uh, and then when you can do it through the yoga, the control of energy, then you can do it uh, through, through sexuality. You need some extra instructions, but then you can transform energy through sexuality. So if you are really interested in, in a relationship, okay, so relationship very often start with desire and some illusion. But when you take the sexuality in the relationship and partners work together, like let's say to work on the heart, through love making, it will bring the amazing loving relationship. Okay, from low desires and egoism, what usually happens in most relationship, it can be it can kind of take you to the to the next step. Okay, please. But not without stop coming. Not without stop coming? Yeah, that was too much. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, you, to do that, you have to stop ejaculating. Yes, yes, yes of course. Uh, to do sexual tantra. I mean, you yes. can go to that and to continue to ejaculate. Uh, but if you want to, to do tantra, yes, you stop ejaculation. Uh, but you don't stop to orgasm. So in tantra, we, uh, men can have so many orgasms and very long orgasms without ejaculation. So you get more energy, uh, much, much higher sexual satisfaction, and you get also, if you do persist on the practice, the opening of the higher state of mind. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win situation. You just need to stick to the practice. Yes. That's all. And uh, uh, to be careful not to abuse the practice. Okay? Yeah. Because uh, this is uh, happened very often that somebody comes learn sexual techniques and then just he like to shake everybody around, you know, and uh, it happened. People yeah. go to come to tantra workshops and just want to have sex as much as they can, you know, and become extremely sexual kind of thing, <laughs> and uh, and then it can be very abusive and it can pull the practitioner down. It can destroy the practitioner. We need we are very positive with sexual energy. But it should be used in an ethical, uh, wise way. Ethical. Wise yes. Way. Yes. So if you know that your uh, connection to a person is going to bring him suffering, don't do that. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. Be open and try not to harm anybody. Okay. <laughs> so when you do any practice, you have to have heart. You need some anahata chakra, and just like you need some ajna. The it's connected to wisdom. Thank yeah. Thank Please. But that's also very. Uh, um, there's no wrong or right answer because sometimes this suffering the person might get is what wakes them up or breaks their illusions or something. They think they are. Yes, but it's not up to you to cause the suffering uh, to evolve so them. What else will do it? They, they, they <laughs> have, but it's hard, they have to have this suffering to wake up. It feels like that. And you and, and I, have, <laughs> I, have, I have maybe the conscience, the conscious, uh, to, to also explain what is happening. And some, if she goes to the city and finds some uh, brutal, uh, masculine man that gives her this suffering, then she may not wake up and see what is actually happening. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> when a woman or man doesn't matter, they have like attachment and they have problems of suffering. Probably is going to come in. Uh, this way or another, but we don't want to um, evoke it uh, intentionally, usually. It's a little bit a dangerous form of practice. I don't know who said it in the, I think in the last workshop, or maybe you told it, Nicholas, I don't remember, about this teacher that he, he kind of gave a lesson to one of his students. So his girlfriend was, uh, was shagged by another guy in front of him, and he had to have sex with a, a woman that he was not attracted to. It's kind of a, a way to to break uh, attachment. Uh, it's a very, very dangerous form of practice. I mean, it's always better to be truthful with the other person, okay, and try to be kind and loving to the other person. And if suffering comes, suffering comes. You can't, you know, that. But uh, it's like... Um, 
in the name of detachment, what we very talk, often talk about in uh, spirituality, we make lots of suffering to others. So, I mean, just be natural and genuine and honest to the other person and be mindful. And I think, uh, I think this is enough. Um, when you try to give a lesson or through the suffering, usually it's the ego that coming up and you, come, you look from superiority to the other person. Mm. I don't think it should be done in a, in a relationship. Try to support your partner. Now, I don't say that monogamy for life is the way, okay? I don't say it's the, that. But, uh, yeah, sometimes you, you see a girl and you know that she's going really to develop very strong attachment to you. She's kind of a, that kind of person. And you're not interested more than a one-night stand. So, I would, let's say, recommend either to avoid this kind of occasion, or you have to tell her openly, look, mm -hmm. this is what I want, and you have to know it before we go, we go to bed. Now, if she decides to go with you and, and then it brings some suffering, this is fair enough, okay? But um, if you come from higher conscious level, you also not do that, okay? It's, uh, I, I would just, uh, one second, I, when, very often when women go into wrong sex, it brings much more harm than, than to men, okay? It happens that there's some women, especially who are young and kind of inexperienced, they're going to go to bed and it kind of fuck them brutally, okay? And they get so much injured emotionally and even you feel it on the physical level and sometimes it kind of lasts for many, many years, okay? So we have to be kind of uh, gentle with that. You have to be careful, okay? Also, you can harm men, of course, but it's a bit more difficult. Uh, women get harm, hurt more than men. They are more receptive in nature and then they get more, more harm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, please. Um, yeah, something totally different. Yeah, of course. Uh, what would you say uh, a pure, purified energy in Manipura would be like when we no longer use power over others? Or if you come I mean, to, to the ultimate... Uh, how, how to purify the Manipura energy and make it a, a, a good power? Uh, well, there is a... Uh, what would it be like? How to use it? Okay, there, there, are, there, are, two, there are two ways. Mm. Maybe more, but this is what comes to my mind now. One is then is to go into Manipura itself, because you know a lot of yoga, so I use these terms, and you use the practices to purify, to go into the maximum purity of the, of the state. I mean, what would be the expression of Manipura power in a good way? In a good way? Yeah. Uh, one example, when you have very developed Anahata Chakra, so really develop on the love, but you have also a quality of a leadership. So this will be the leader from the heart. You lead others to help others. Mahatma Gandhi. Love okay. in action. Hmm? Love in action. Exactly. Exactly. So you also have a strong Manipura. Of course. Power. Of course. Jesus. Yeah. Very strong Manipura, yeah? But it <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus was a good. But I didn't know him personally. So. Uh, <laughs> but you look to his actions, you look to the right, and I mean, Jesus was great. Christianity is uh, very often. Sometimes he got angry, and then he just smashed everything. Yeah, yeah, this is great. <laughs> Something you have to cut through, like kind of like a Zen master. Mm. But what is the intention behind it? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but you see, you saw great teachers, uh, teachers and uh, leaders. Yes, they kind of lead. But it, it's not also like if if you have a lot of heart and you don't have so much money for it can be a bit yeah most at, it's a driving force or yes sometimes you need that sometimes it's, it's very good especially if you are working with people in front of people so you need to go to the manipura and to because what happened is for the sana person the person on the second chakra they're very emotional uh, sexual that look for relationships and look for his beauty you tend to be a little bit spineless a little bit uh, lack of uh, center and then the person with Manipur will give him this center, you know? It kind of, he, he, very often people looking for a leader. So it's better to find a good leader. Yeah, and then say, yes, you should go that way. <laughs> this is the right way, yeah, for you, you know? But are you motivated by helping him or are you motivated by the power that you get? Mm. So if you have big heart, then Manipur is great. You can also have uh, other connections, uh, like Ajna is a state of wisdom. So you have the wisdom now that you need really to do vipassana. You have to do lots of meditation because you know that you are, uh, you are very impure in a certain aspect of your being. 
really understand that. But to do now a um, strong meditation, you need the power of money because it can take you there. If you go to a Zen monastery, in, you need to sit uh, 14 hours a day in meditation, you need lots of lots of willpower. Mm -hmm. Then the willpower is going to be a very positive thing. And willpower is very good also. Of course, yeah. yeah. Willpower of courage, self-esteem, center, leadership. Mm. Yeah. So ego is not something bad. Mm. Okay? It's a cliche. Get rid of the ego, I think it's a spiritual cliche. Yeah, so ego is can be very, very useful. Ego is a problem when there is only ego. Yeah, it's the problem when you don't have the chapters above many poor. Exactly. But when you have those connected also then This is the whole point. This is good perspective to the low chakras. Then it becoming beautiful. So let's say you have a big heart, okay, you're a very you're a loving person, but you also have a big spadistana, so you're very sexual. Okay? Then you can actually make love from the heart. Yeah? It can come together. This is the perfect lover connection, Svadistana Anahata. Yeah? Because if you have only Anahata, you really love your partner, but you cannot get it on. You can, you know, you cannot get election. <laughs> yeah? So, but, uh, but if you have it together, it will uh, manifest together and it can be really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you have only Svadistana, you manifest only on the lows, then it's getting ugly, of course. Yeah? So, if, so if you go to the start of the talk, in the Vedanta, the, uh, idea, you only want to go to the high state of mind and to avoid the low. The tantrics want to use the low uh, aspects to come to the high, mm -hmm. and then the low ones be are becoming beautiful. Okay? So, uh, continue with the same uh, line you started. So, let's say you have a very big heart with love, and you also have a big muladhara. Muladhara connection to mat materi materialism, and also to money. People with muladhara tend to make more money. Okay, so you make lots of money and you have anahata, so maybe you donate the money and you help others. You make organization to help the orphanages or whatever, you know. So you can use it in a very positive way. The low will uh, give perspective to uh, the, the high, give perspective to the low. Mm. Um, just please, just one clarification you're, you're not teaching them data. So you're only teaching the Trump part? No, I teach also sometimes, uh, when I was in France, I was now uh, giving more of a Vedantic style of practice. So some people say, I really don't care of sex, I don't want to go into that. But what do you do here in Denmark? Is more I'm going to teach, yeah, I teach more like, a, what I do like in this next weekend is a sexual Tantra uh, workshop yes. that based lots of, lots of yoga. But when you understand the yoga, you can say, well, I don't want to have sex, I can use the yoga just to go above that, and I don't want relation to women. I want to have peace of mind without women. You can use it. Mm -hmm. And I support people that want to do that. So my main teacher is like that. Actually, all my main teachers are like that. Okay? I'm a little different than them. They, they know that, they, they respect it, but uh, yeah. But yeah, it's a good option. So, so I take a strong yoga exercises. I know that you're a bit new, but the, basically you take the energy from the low chakras and you push it forcefully to the high chakras, then you don't feel sexual. Every time you feel home, you do certain exercise for a few minutes, maybe a little bit more, then you don't feel it anymore, and then you get manifestation of love. Why not? It's a very good deal. Yeah? <laughs> yeah it is a good deal. It's a great deal. Why, why, to, uh, um, why to go into the sexual tantra? One of the reasons it actually it's much faster. It's a very strong way, in my view. This is my opinion. A very strong way. It's very very strong. Yes, because when you use your own sexual energy, it's limited to what you have. So let's say you have a uh, ten units of sexual energy. This is what you can use inside your system. If you have a partner and she has ten units, you don't have twenty. You have hundred. <laughs> it kind of multiples itself ten to be more and more and more, more desire. You can flush strong, very 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 strong, and uh, I think it's a very beautiful practice. I mean, I like this practice. Yeah? Uh, for me, it was, uh, I come from a religious suppressed background with sexuality. So, to do spiritual practice with sex, when everything was uh, so positive about it, it was amazing. Yeah? Uh, Judaism is a kind of anti sex religion, although they never said it, but it's, there is lots of, uh, they give so many restrictions for sexuality in Judaism. But they're both into family. Hmm? It's yeah. both about family. Yeah. Also the, uh, like, what's the priest? Rabbi. Yeah, he also married. Yes, yes, it's always about that. And the women, I mean, in Judaism, always look as mothers. The mothers? Mothers. 
the woman become a model. But the feminine aspect of women being seductive and beautiful and powerful, yeah, they, they don't like that. Also in Christianity, also in most religions. Yeah? What do Muslims do? They cover the women. Women are dangerous. They have so much energy and they pull the men out of the right way. So instead of... <laughs> instead but it's of, the men who are dangerous. <laughs> well, in another way. But because women are inferior. So let's cover the women that will not be a problem anymore. And Tantra say, no, we love women like that. And this can be useful in spirituality and you like to have this game. Of course. Yeah? Uh, yeah, but it's going to be harder. Somebody's coming? Yes. Somebody's coming. Good. Right. <laughs> it's it's raining outside. Yeah, it's raining outside. Yeah, it's raining outside. Okay, it's just so much there before. Ah, yes, keep You want to come inside? What? You want to come inside? No, I have to buy a lid. Okay. We don't want to go to the start. No. Okay. We don't want to go to the start. What do you do? I have to buy a lid. <laughs> Alright, um, so I, I wanted to have also, of course, practical uh, part of the class, and I wanted to take five minutes break before that.